Fight fans, I'm James Smith at the International Boxing Hall of Fame, brought to you by Mexico. Check out visitmexico.com, live it to believe it. And also brought to you by the WBC. Well, it's Sunday here in Canastota, New York, International Boxing Hall of Fame. Sunday is all about these greats being immortalized here in Canastota. This is what it's all about, the day of the enshrinement. And I thought about this day for 33 years, and I'm finally here. And guess what? I don't know what to say. <laughs> but what I, will, what, I, what I will say is that, listen, I had a wonderful career. God is good. He's um, helped me when I needed a lot of help. You know, my wife, she, she's, um, she's so wonderful. I couldn't have married a better person, except when she gives me a hard time. <laughs> but you know what? It is so great seeing all, all the people that's involved with boxing. You know, um, Jake LaMotta. Jake LaMotta. And God, I used to watch when I was small. Pino Cuevas. He never knew I watched him, and this is my first time seeing him. He didn't look at me right the other day, so I, I thought I might, I might hit him with a hook, but <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't do it. But anyway, we got a great referee here, Larry Hazard. Mills, not Mills London, not here. Joe Cortez, he was, he was so great. And Holyfield knocked me down. I swear to God, this is what I thought he said to me. He was counting. One, two, three. Get your punk ass up. <laughs> so I listened to him and I got up. That's what I thought he said. Or well, maybe Holyfield hit me too hard. But I got up and I won the fight. So thank God for him. Well, if I fight again, he needs to be the referee. Because if I get knocked down, I'm getting up. Well, anyway, you guys, I had a wonderful career. I, I want to thank Muhammad Ali, because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. He said, come on, sucker. I did, did a dream. Come on, sucker. And I've been dreaming ever since. Koshite. Nihongo de chotto. Koshite, subarashi champion to dendo iru no I am honored to be inducted with these great champions and be among all of these great champions. I would like to go back to Japan and tell them how great it was here. I will come back again. Thank you. I'm going to keep this relatively brief, I hope, because I so strongly believe at this place and at this moment, everything should belong to the people who are courageous enough to step inside the ropes, both to entertain us and to teach us important lessons about life. Boxing is a canvas on which an endless stream of artists paint indelible images. I get the privilege of knowing them and attempting to describe what they do. And just for example, I wouldn't be standing here today if it were not for the memories that Riddick Bowe and Prince Nassim Hamed provided. I might not have appealingly described them if I hadn't been watching and listening when Ray Mancini was delivering incomparable thrills before I began calling fights. So I'm specifically grateful to all of them for the chance to be here today, especially Riddick, who's a dear old friend and whose fights were always amazing drama on HBO. 
you know, none of this would be possible without the fighters. We'd all be unemployed. So, you know, those are the people that I owe the most to. Uh, they took the punches. They suffered the consequences. I just chronicled what they did. So I feel that I'm in a different league. I can't even compare to any of those. But I, I do want to say something about boxing itself, not about myself. As you know, it gets a lot of criticism. It has good times and it has bad times. But there's something maybe people don't think about. Every one of you out there or is a predator. All, all life is either prey or predators. Human beings are predators. That's why we survived as long as we did when other, other species uh, died out. Now, in order to survive, we had to be tough, we had to be mean, and we had to do a lot of nasty stuff. But we needed a way to express that in more civilized times. And I believe that boxing is the most noble and wonderful way to express that side of us. Yes, sometimes people get hurt, and you know, there's some tragedy in boxing. But think of how boxing is compared to war, where thousands and millions of people die. Boxing is a wonderful thing, and it's never going to die until human nature changes, and I don't see any sign of that. Thank you, everybody, especially the Hall of Fame. So, as time and luck would have it, right place, right time, Casino Gaming comes to Atlantic City. And literally, the day after gaming, the fight community of Philly and New York comes to Atlantic City, and the first professional shows of that era begin in Resorts International. It was the only game in town. And one afternoon, I'm at the PAL, Police Athletic League. At that time, in 1980, I was appointed the district attorney of the city of Atlantic City. There were no beepers, uh, there were no cell phones, and the mayor of our city said, if you complete your docket by 2.30, as long as you're on a city extension to respond to the judges, it's okay. So yours truly would leave City Hall. There was a city extension at the PAL Center. So I would go there, get in the ring, and actually set bail in the ring while working, but I'm still on the city clock, city time. Sometime in late 78, 79, the phone rings at the PAL Center and there was a phone connection. It was an old firehouse and we used to go up this winding staircase to the gym. Phone rings, I pick up the phone. PAL Center, Steve speaking. Uh, can I help you? He says, is there anybody there that knows anything about boxing? I said, well, sir, I think I know a little bit about boxing. Can I be of some service? He says, true story. This is Jersey Joe Walcott, commissioner of the state of New Jersey. We have a pro card at resorts. We're short inspectors. Can anyone come over and help us out watching, wrapping hands and such and so forth? I said, you're speaking to the right guy, sir. May I, uh, what time is report time? He said in an hour, be in the front of Resorts International. That was it, the beginning. So he turned pro in 1979 and behind a relentless all-action style began a meteoric rise to the top of the lightweight division. He captured the NABF lightweight title in 1981, then in 82 he defeated Arturo Freas to win the WBA lightweight strap and fulfill his father's dream. He retired with a record of 29 wins, just five defeats, 23 knockouts. The pride of Youngstown, Ohio, remains one of boxing's most popular figures. Ray Boom Boom Mancini. And I'd like to call, before he comes up, folks, I'd like to call his two sons, Leo and Ray Jr., to come up to say a few words. You're my idol, and your man... You're man I strive to be every day. You go through what you go through what you have gone through in life, and I don't know how you're still standing here smiling, but I'm glad you are. It's an honor to have the same name and being your son. I can't tell you how proud I am of you. Every time I go on YouTube and watch your fights, I feel as if I'm there and get tired of watching doing your thing. I hope you know how proud I am of you. 
It has boom boom, it has my father. And every time I leave for college and I see for the last time till break, I want to cry like a baby and not let go of you when I say bye. Because you mean the world and more to me. I hope I make you proud. I want to be his model and live with his great name. For I am this man's son and I'll never bear him shame. And I could give you a list of reasons why he's a great father. But I'll tell you this. He's always been there for us. Every practice, every game, every major event, he's there. Maybe a little too much, but hey, he's there. <laughs> and that's all a kid could ask for his father. And I wasn't alive when he was fighting, but I've seen every fight. And I've seen the effect he has on people. And as a kid, you don't really understand. But as, you grow old, as I grew older, I realized my dad was the man. And I just want to say, I couldn't be more proud of my dad today. This honor has been a long time coming. And finally today, boxing, boxing and ducks, not only a great fighter, but a great man. Thank you. Father, couldn't ask for better boys. Couldn't ask for better sons. Come on. And, and I, so I thank them. I thank God for them. And um, I just say, I accept this today, this award, on behalf of my father and my mother. But to, to you know, and I accept this on behalf of all the Hall of Fame and all you guys here. And I certainly appreciate you allowing me to be stand here. But tomorrow, tomorrow, this will be my, my children's. This will be my boys. They'll be theirs. And every day after, they'll be theirs. I'll, be, I'll hold it for a while. I'll be wearing it for a while, but it's theirs. And I, wanted, I, I want them to know. I accept it on their behalf because I want it to be a reminder to them to, reminder to, them to dream and dream big, dream bigger than life, to remember to chase those dreams and to realize that dreams can and do come true. I'm living proof of that. Thank you so much, God bless you. <laughs>